Hey everybody, y'all are looking at one of Texas's newest LTC holders, license to carry. I got my LTC, so let me be. I can carry a gun, so this song is done. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why I decided to get an LTC, how you get one in Texas, What's the process like, how I prepared, because I came into this knowing zero about shooting things. Hopefully you guys find this video useful. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Here we go. First of all, why did I want to get a license to carry? I mean, I had just moved to Texas and I was thinking, oh, you know, it's kind of badass. One thing I didn't really know beforehand though, is that if you want to have a gun, like just to practice with at the range or have one in your house, you actually don't need an LTC. An LTC is actually like if you're going to concealed carry, like carry one in your bag or also in your car, things like that, um, you should have an LTC. I didn't know that before. I thought just in general, like even if I'm going to go to the store and buy a gun, I thought, oh, to take it home, I need to have an LTC because it's going to be in my car. Like I, I always kind of overthink things. So anyway, I thought, you know, I wonder what it's like, you know, what's the process like me coming from LA you know, zero background in this kind of thing, I thought it would be a cool challenge. I always love to learn new things. I originally bought this Groupon, it was like 30 bucks, 30 or 40 bucks, I think it was 30, for a, an LTC class in Crosby. I was reading the fine print when I realized that you're supposed to be going into this LTC class with general knowledge on how to use a gun. Like, you know, you need to know how to load and shoot and all that kind of thing. And I didn't know any of that. So I was like, uh-oh, uh -oh. I can't schedule for this you know, test for next Saturday because I don't even know what I'm doing. The place where I had booked was in Crosby and I looked, it was called Spring Guns and Ammo. And I found out that they have this thing called like Girl in a Gun. And so it's a women's shooting club, basically. I am super grateful to Melinda because she's the one who actually showed me how to use a gun in the first place. Then we went into like this range area where you put, then you put the headphones on. Make sure you also have a eye and ear pro eye protection and ear protection before you try to use a gun at the range because it's very loud and you'll kind of like jump the first time that you hear it. I didn't have a gun at the time. I still don't have one. You can rent one from the store or borrow somebody else's if they're okay with letting you use one. So one of the other women let me use her gun. It was a 1911. There's a Springfield Armory 1911 EMP. This is my first time shooting. Let me show you the result my first time I didn't I actually did pretty well like everything was in like the five point range I think I had to buy bullets though due to the pandemic I think the price of ammo has gone up so it was about 50 bucks for this little box of ammo the second time I came by uh, spring guns and ammo it was I guess the 10 and I did it from a bit further away so I did from some from three yards some from seven yards some from 15 yards away is this Glock 17 Generation 4? Actually not bad for, I mean, it's still a beginner. All right, after having these two experiences at Spring Guns and Ammo Crosby, I made a new friend here in Houston. His name is Joe, and he told me about this thing called Thunder Gun Range, and they have these like weekly or bi-weekly little competitions where you can practice shooting. On St. Patrick's Day, there was this kind of like a Thunder Shooters Club, like little competition. Uh, for people who were just, yeah, I guess gun enthusiasts um, and who like to shoot. So before the competition, I did a few rounds and I think I did okay. Well, so I'm way down here, but um, not too bad. And my friend Joe let me use his gun, which was very nice. And he brought all this ammo and stuff. So he's like the most prepared person in the world. Joe is awesome. Thank you, Joe. You had a big part in, in making this video possible. As you can see, I didn't do too terribly bad. I'm just a little bit slow because I'm still new to it. So basically how the competition works is, yeah, they put you in teams and you just go one at a time. There's like a certain challenge. I think the first one we had, um, you shoot with the right hand. You can shoot with both hands, just uh, target A, B, C, D, and then you shoot with one hand and you just try to get, I think two, you get two, round, two rounds in each one. Then we rotated to another station and then another station. It was just, I think it was about three hours almost of shooting. It was a really good practice for me because that coming Saturday, I believe it was March 20th, is when I had my LTC class and my test in Crosby. The LTC shooting test, let me make sure. It's okay. Three distances, uh, 20 rounds at three yards, 20 rounds at seven yards, and 10 rounds at 15 yards. 
you need a minimum of 175 points, I believe, to pass. And as you can see, the points are here. So five, like any five points is basically if you get within these, like the eight or the nine, I believe, is five points. And then a seven is four points. And then somewhere out here is three points. So as you can see, I got a 247. So, you know, for somebody who had only been shooting for a few weeks, I passed with, with flying colors, I guess you could say. And the LTC class, how it actually works, we had our shooting test first. All right, so I did this first. I found out I passed it, alhamdulillah. And then she has like a PowerPoint and it's just talking about like gun laws and you know, what's okay about this and this and this. And you have to do a test, like a written test. It's multiple choice, I think it's like 20 questions, 25 questions. And as long as you get, I think 70% on it, then you pass the written test. So there's a written test and the shooting test. All right guys, after you pass the shooting test and the written test, there's a little certificate of training. Texas DPS has like this kind of template. And I guess they scan it or they fax it. They, they send a copy to DPS, so they have that on file, and then you have your copy. The next step is you have to do this application online. It was about $43. That's the application fee for an LTC. You go to the DPS website. When you get home, fill out a bunch of information. Then it'll ask you to do, uh, was it fingerprints? Yeah. So you have to make an appointment. I think it's called with Adentogo or something to get your fingerprints taken. So I guess because they do background check and all that before they issue the LTC. All right, so uh, my class was on a Saturday and then the following Monday is when I got my fingerprints taken. That was $10. So there's the application online, $43, so a total of about 53 bucks. The day after I submitted my fingerprints and I know I uploaded this document and everything. All right, so I got this email from DPS on March 23rd saying that all the documents were received. My LTC card did not actually come in the mail until April 27th, so it was a little over a month. Um, and you get this thing with your card attached. Interestingly, they take your photo at the fingerprint appointment, but your photo on the LTC is actually the same one that's on your driver license. There you go. The whole process took for me from zero to LTC about two months. But if you count, okay, just the day I took the test was the 20th and I got the LTC a month later, the 27th. A little over a month, you can get your LTC in Texas. It's really not that difficult. But overall, yeah, it was a really fun experience. And I would definitely go to the, the gun club again, just for fun. I think that the satisfaction of finding, oh, like I hit, you know, when you're shooting it, let me talk about the experience. <laughs> when I first shot the gun, it's so loud and, you know, it's such a, like, it's powerful. Um, I mean, you have to be holding it very tightly anyway, but you still kind of like feel like, like you flinch. And sometimes too, the shell will fall back, will come back. So that's why when I shoot, I usually, I'll have um, the eye protection and also a hat on. Uh, another thing is if you're a woman, don't try not to have something like really low cut because the shell is hot and it could fall into your boobs. Uh, that's happened before. I mean, not to me, but people have told me stories. I mean, it could hit your eye. That's why you use eye pro. It could hit, yeah, just, you know, you're kind of, like, for me, I kind of take my time and like I have, you know, my stance and I like, hold it very tightly and I'm like, you know, you have the crosshairs, you kind of line up everything. And We're going to talk about sights. They're used to help aim the pistol. You got two in the back and one in the front. And all you do is line it up to where it makes a line where the front side is in the middle of the rear sights. Um, during the daytime, these are white colored, but at nighttime they glow green. So that's pretty handy. Do I have a gun? No, not yet. I'm still kind of in the research process, like trying different ones, seeing what I like. I'll keep you posted on that. If you want to know, <laughs> ask me. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, concerns. I don't know what you'd be concerned about, but uh, comments down below, like, and subscribe. Shukku marathania. Yalla. Bye. Starting off with some of the basics um, are the magazines. Um, this is where we um, load the bullets. Usually we put 10 bullets per magazine. Most magazines are staggered, like this one, um, where they're kind of placed in this formation to increase capacity. The 1911s are a little bit different. They only stack right on top of each other, so they call this one a single stack. Um, okay, starting off with the mags, you can release the magazine by pressing this button.
So most of them are push button and most of them you can relocate the magazine to the other side of the pistol. On the HK it's a little bit different. Instead of a push button, it's actually a lever that you depress down. So this one is um, convenient for ambidextrous users because you don't have to modify the tool, the gun in any way to for left or right handed shooters. Okay, um, next we're going to talk about triggers. Uh, most of them have this kind of like a baby trigger. It's called a trigger safety. So when you fire the weapon, you actually have to have the baby trigger depressed and the trigger fully depressed in order for it to go off. Um, so this is kind of how it sounds like. So for competition, a lot of people really value the way their triggers feel. So a lot of times they want a trigger that uh, doesn't take much distance for it to go off and they don't want much distance for it to reset. So that's kind of what the uh, 911 is best known for. Um, they call it breaking glass. And then you can listen to this one. If you notice, it had a really small um, trigger pull distance and a really quick reset. So that's why a lot of competition users like um, 1911 triggers. The 1911 trigger does not have that baby trigger inside of it, but it does use a beaver tail. <clears throat> so you have to fully depress the beaver tail when you hold it in, or, in order for this to go off. Okay, next up we're gonna be talking about barrels. Barrels are what allows the bullet to fly straight. Uh, they do that by using rifling inside of it. Um, the front end of the barrel is called the muzzle and the back end is called the chamber. Um, if you're concealing it, I would recommend a barrel that's four inches or shorter because that allows you to holster the weapon and still sit down in a seat and not have the gun touch the top of the seat. People that use barrels that are greater than four inches typically use them for competition or for hunting only. Um, this production gun doesn't have any special cuts on the side of it, but other race guns do have uh, cuts made on the side of the barrel, which reduces recoil and, and therefore muzzle rise whenever you shoot quickly. Thank you.